Thanks everyone for coming this afternoon. Well, the work I'm going to present today is joined with uh, Pierce Fleming and Stephen Watson, and it's been conducted at the University of Estonia. What we're going to do today is to try to answer, based on existing evidence, try to answer two questions. What is the evidence that unlawful sharing causes harm? And in this context, you know, are the questions remain unanswered? And much of the report is on the second question, which is why do people choose to have share an object? Or rather, what are the classes of reasons by which people may choose to Engaging a lot of Okay? Now, my focus is going to be very much on the evidence. And the way we approach the evidence has been to use a methodology uh, used in the medical sciences, natural sciences, which is a scoping review methodology, which is a form of procedure by which you can look at evidence by looking at keywords in a number of different databases and see what comes up, then filter these off based on criteria such as, for example, the existence of publications or the existence of actual evidence as opposed to being just a set piece. And by this process, which Stephen will be able to talk about in a little bit later if anyone is interested, we move from over 54,000 different sources to a little over 200. Right? And this represents empirical and primary data about people's unlawful culture <coughs> in social media over 10 years. Notice that the focus has been <laughs> notice that the focus has been squarely on the evidence. Okay? This will be an important point. Okay? So it's not been on, for example, economic models. Okay? That, that, that is a very relevant point for some for something some of the things I'm going to say later. One of the dimensions that we felt was very important was actually the kind of empirical data that we find in these studies. Okay? Because not, not all data is, we would judge, of the same uh, relevance or significance. There is obviously qualitative data that can provide some valuable information. But then really, one way of thinking about this is in terms of the extent to which a particular variable, a particular measure of unlawful file sharing actually can be used as a proxy for actual behavior, okay? For actual behavior. As it turns out, you will see not many studies actually do that. So we've actually got quite a bit of a range of different measures that are actually used. So there is quite a bit of work which is on stated preferences and attitudes, okay? So this is simply about how good or bad an outcome is considered to be, right or wrong, preferable. Um, we would judge this as being generally fairly low quality type of data. The distance between that and actual behavior is quite large. One step further, or one step closer, but still very far away from actual behavior, is the number of studies that look at intentions. So they ask participants behavior that they plan to engage in the behavior in the future. So intentions of future things. 
okay? Hypothetical, counterfactual, however you want to call them, but not actual behavior. There are studies that look at willingness to pay. That is the amount of money that the participant states that they're willing to obtain in order to obtain a good, in order to pay, in order to obtain a good. Now, usually this is done in a hypothetical fashion, which frankly reduces it, the value of these studies considerably, because you can always state the numbers if you don't actually have, a, have to have a purse to back it up. One step closer, there are studies of stated behavior. Now, this is when you ask a participant behavior that has been engaged in the past. So, how much false, legal file sharing have you done over the past six months, for example, okay? There are still problems with this type of data. Uh, because of the type of responses that you get when you ask these type of questions, because people don't remember, because people may not give you the right answer. But it is one step closer to actual behavior. And finally, there is observed behavior. So that is a behavior that is either directly observed, such as in an experiment, or else at the population level, say sales data. Okay? So that is, that is one important dimension. Now, if we focus now on the welfare side, it is important to think of welfare from both the welfare side, from both the uh, producer side and the consumer side. And we have come to this study with no preconception. We have found studies that do both, or rather do one or the other. So there have been studies that have looked at the impact of unlawful file sharing on legal sales. The focus of these studies has been on the producer side, which of course is an important side. There have been very few studies, I have to say, that have looked at purely the consumer size by asking for willingness to pay for files. So here they focus purely on the consumers. Interestingly, and we're going to see this pattern again, out of 67 observations in terms of studies that we saw, about two thirds of them are about music. Now there are a number of media, different media that you can think of, music, movies, software, games, but we only find a focus on music and, to a lesser extent, movies. Okay. Very few other mediums. If we focus on the producer side, that is where most of the work has been, and what these literatures have looked at is the correlation between unlawful file sharing, that's what UPS means in, in these slides, and legal file sharing. There are different studies which have reached different type of conclusions, sometimes sensitive to what you include, what you exclude to the method of analysis. One problem is that in many cases there is reliance on stated, even hypothetical behavior or counterfactuals. That is a problem with this study. And ignoring the consumer side is a problem. Hmm? Producer side is very important, it's extremely important. We do take that very seriously. But you can't ignore the consumer side when you look at welfare. There are only four studies that look at the consumer side that we could find. And the general claim is that unlawful file sharing is actually good for wealth. That's the, that's the claim in these studies. However, we shouldn't jump on the bandwagon too, quick, too quickly because although 
you know, the idea that you measure the consumers willing to space will, will, will appeal many economists. It is actually unable to capture dynamic welfare effects. It is unable to capture the extent to which uh, you may discourage the production of future creative goods. And that is not captured yet. So it's skewed as an analysis. Um, been mostly with students, just university students. And finally, all based on hypothetical data. And I strongly expect, as an experimental economist, that this will have biased upwards quite systematically in favor of unlawful file sharing. Okay? So, clearly limitations, clearly the need of evidence, evidence, evidence. Now, why do people file share unlawfully? What you will find in the report is a little model which classifies different sources or different determinants of unlawful file sharing. We classify them in five groups. There are considerations of financial and legal, legal utility and disutility, so financial and legal determinants, okay? The differential price between legal and illegal, and the legal barriers, right? The legal framework. There are dimensions and determinants that relate to experiential type of factors. That is, the extent to which you have a preference, you perceive the good that you want to kind of engage in, you want, you want to consume. There are technical factors, how easy it is to get access to legal or uh, unlawful products. There are social factors, potentially there are social factors. Uh, you do what your peers do. And there may be moral factors of determinants, right? For example, to what extent do consumers think that there is harm for other parties by engaging in unlawful file sharing, okay? So there are moral type of considerations that may, be, may matter as well. So this may all matter, and they will lead to an uh, overall judgment that then will lead to a decision whether to do nothing, purchase a legal, a legal a legal product or engage in piracy. We have mapped the evidence we have found in a cubic model. This is the cube that you will find on the cover of the report. This cube has got three dimensions. One dimension is the uh, type of it's the source of, of unlawful file sharing. So experiential, moral, social, financial, legal, technical utility, for example. And another dimension, you've, you've got the type of data. This is what I was talking about earlier. How close do you get to observe behavior? And then on another dimension, that's this dimension over here, you get the industry. Okay. Music, software, movies, video games, books, TV, or generic. We simply couldn't tell from this stuff. Now, it should be obvious by looking at that cube how the evidence appears to be quite skewed. You know, you see, each of these little um, spheres represents the number of observations that we found in terms of studies for each combination of medium, uh, that is market, uh, type of measurement of unlawful file sharing, and type of determinant of unlawful file sharing. And you will see that there are quite big spheres up there and very little down here. It's 
30. Okay. Let's look at this in more detail. So stated preferences, this is not ideal. It's not observed behavior. But what there is, it's primarily on music followed by software. Very little on everything else. This is less visible, but it's intentions, and, re and basically it follows the same pattern, okay? So music followed by software, followed by everything else. Uh, this is less visible, but there is very little to see actually, because there are only f very few studies under music, basically, for willingness to pay. Um, this we have considered uh, before, said so the behavior. What about observed behavior? This is the most interesting one. It's the one that is most accurately reflects actually what's going on. And you find here that the data is skewed in two ways. First of all, again, there is a strong skew towards having studies, not many studies, so I'm not saying that actually there has been a lot of studies with music, because there hasn't been, but comparatively speaking there has been more with music, uh, followed by movies, a little bit on software, and then almost nothing else, okay? Virtually no data with other, in other markets. And what data there is, tends to have focused on financial and legal factors or on technical factors. In terms of observed behavior, there is basically nothing down here. Moral social factors simply haven't been seen with when it comes to actual behavior. So, some implications that we have found Financial and legal utility, high prices do appear to reduce sales, lower the willingness to pay for content. Stronger laws do appear to reduce unlawful file sharing, but the effect may be temporary. We've tended to find evidence of temporary effect. And there is limited behavioral data confirming causal, a causal role. Experiential factors, we found some evidence that desire to sample new content, access niche content, build a collection may be relevant. Technical utility, technical factors, there is, it tends to work as an initial barrier to unlawful file sharing. But again, there is the need of hard, observed behavior in terms of evidence. Social utility, we do find some correlation between unlawful file sharing, mainly in terms of intentions, and peer unlawful file sharing. But causality is a mess in this area. And there is not very little in terms of observed behavior, and similarly in terms of moral factors. So, let me conclude. Our key, our key benchmark, our key message has to do with evidence, evidence, evidence. Having good evidence, having more evidence, having evidence about behavior, having causal evidence is absolutely key for a good understanding of unlawful file sharing and therefore for affecting, for changing the incidence of unlawful file sharing. We have proceeded in a systematic way. That was the point of our, of our survey. Uh, I'm aware in which there are strong ideological views from both sides of the 
of an axis debate. That's not what we're interested in. That's not what we wanted to do. That's not what we really are there to do. We wanted to see what the evidence was. And the review methodology enables anyone who wants to question some of our conclusion to actually, you know, they can do something similar, actually. There, 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 is, this, there is a description methodology. So if you think you can do better, you actually can. The methodology is described in the report. And you're welcome to use it. As I said earlier, why, the why is essential for the how. If you don't understand why, you won't be able to understand the how, of how you're going to affect unlawful file sharing. The cube is helpful in that context to understand where the gaps are in the evidence. And we have seen clear gaps in the evidence base both in terms of the fact of concentration of studies in very specific, in specific industries, but not in others, absence of studies in others, virtually, and along the lines of focus often on proxies of unlawful sharing that um, from a behavioral experimental economics perspective, which is mine, frankly, are likely to bear very little relationship with actual behavior. These things matter. These things clearly matter as far as policy goes, as far as stakeholders goes, because these are the kind of things from which then, in relation to, depending on how they matter, you can use as a lever to affect unlawful file sharing, to reduce unlawful file sharing, to increase legal sales. So, um, in terms of financial legal utility, of course, you can think of ways of changing the price differential between legal and illegal. That's where different business models may come in. You can think about changing legal consequences, but the worry is that the effects may be temporary. So that is a source of concern, if you think about that. It may not actually be the solution that you think it is. Experiential utility, one of the things that emerged was that people who tend to engage in the greatest amount of unlawful file sharing tends to also to be the people who tend to engage in the greatest amount of legal purchases. Okay? So they tend to be the, great, with the, the people with the greatest interest in the media per se. So there is a point there of thinking about policies which target consumers with greater interest in the media specifically. Technical utility that is in principle straightforward, make legal easier, make illegal harder. Sometimes, for example, there is a problem with niche content that may not be available legally, okay? in which case unlawful file sharing is the only way to go if the consumer wants to have access to the content. Social utility changes social norm. Okay. Change the social norm, that would be a recommendation. Moral utility, change the perception of moral value. For example, the perception of no harm. Okay. Of course, some recent advertising campaigns have been along these lines. Um, but the problem there, and of course that's a more general problem, but applies the most to this type of potentially attractive form of interventions, relates to evidence, 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 or rather, the insufficient amount of actual behavioral evidence. Thank you very much. <laughs>